Okay, so I'm Frederick, and this is my colleague Alf, and uh, we're going to tell you a little bit of, about our experiences with uh, combining Scala and Wicket. Um, so was this a match made in heaven or a total disaster? So a little background first. Um, we're in the program committee for JavaSong, which is a Java conference in Norway, and last year we were basically drowning in emails with uh, submissions. So and there's a lot of uh, manual work uh, involved, so we figured there's got to be a better way to handle this. So we've both been learning Scala for a while, and Alf knew Wicket from uh, previously, so we set out to create a simple web application to handle these submissions. Um, so basically, this allowed the users to uh, submit their uh, submit and review their abstracts and update them, and all of this would then be put into our existing backend system using REST. So on the one hand, we had uh, Wicket, which is a stateful, component-based uh, web framework written in Java. It has a really nice uh, model view controller implementation. <laughs> 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 On the other hand, we have Scala, which is a more um, encourages uh, functional uh, approach using immutable objects and such. And of course, we have all these first-class functions and traits and mixings and things like that. So, how do these uh, mix? Basically, how do they work together? Um, well, basically, we could set some of the ground rules. We need, to, in our, for example, in our domain, domain model needs to be mutable. Uh, but of course, Scala can do this as well. Like, you don't have to do immutable objects. So, using this, we would expect to get really clean and concise, um, maintainable code that's easy to read. Uh, and also, we have access to a lot of powerful high-level abstractions through Scala. So, you would expect really happy developers, right? But, well, in reality, this sometimes happens. Uh, we ran into a couple of issues along the way that uh, made it a little harder to, a little bit more frustrating. So, Alf. Sure. So the first thing is that uh, Wiki uses uh, Java collections, of course, main lists. Now, uh, when programming Scala, you really want to use Scala collections. Uh, this is because of the functional goodness of, uh, that Scala collections provide. So there's actually a really simple solution to this. Uh, now you'll find one uh, implicit uh, that you import wherever you need it. Now, the implicit will convert your Scala list to a Java list without any trace in your code, well, except for the import place. So, um, Wicket handles the back button quite nicely, uh, but it's done by copying every object by Java serialization. This means in practice that every object which is referenced by a Wicket component must be serializable, uh, and that can be quite annoying. <coughs> now, examples of classes in Scala which are not serializable are first class functions and regular expressions. Also, every uh, parameter of a Scala primary constructor becomes an instance member and therefore must be serializable. So we tried out we, uh, all of the different tools, but we ended up using Eclipse since that was the most familiar. And well, they were, no, they were really good. Uh, and we also had a few problems with Eclipse. We had problems with uh, making it actually build the project. But when we got it to build it, <coughs> you get like these annoying things like, uh, if it correctly shows uh, uh, an error, but you don't get it down here, so you need to do a mouse hover to for a few seconds to see what's wrong. So when you get it to work, it's actually quite fine. Uh, and when we use it with Java Rebel, it becomes quite great. Now, changing code uh, is a matter of compiling, and it will be swapped into your running app automatically, which is really awesome. Now, Java Rebel is currently free for Scala though. So, to start wrapping up, does this lead to improve developer productivity? Well, sometimes yes, and sometimes no. Overall, perhaps a little worse for productivity than how written in Java. Uh, so, did it lead to improved code quality? Uh, apart from not always being able to write the code that we wanted, for instance, because of the back button issue, uh, I would definitely say yes. In our opinion, the code is a lot more concise, and we had relatively few bugs. So, <coughs> we believe that both Scala and Wicked are two very nice technologies, uh, but together it does do the two <coughs> make a wrong in this case. Well, <coughs> it's perhaps not a match made in heaven, but we think that Scala and Wicked work very nicely together, uh, and we would definitely recommend it. <coughs> so, to conclude, we currently, currently give Scala and Wicked in combination one thumb up. <laughs>